I'm the founder and co-coordinator of the 100 Mile Mark Buyers Group. We are a local fresh meat, fruit and vegetable buyers group who try to source all of our product from within a 100 mile radius. The 100 Mile Mark is a cooperative enterprise. A co-op is a group of people who form together for a common cause or purpose. In this case, we're a group of buyers who have come together to try to provide the highest quality food at affordable prices while minimizing our environmental impact. Unlike a typical business where a president or CEO call all the shots, all members in a co-op not only pay a direct fee for their membership in the co-op, but have a direct say and input into the direction that the co-op is going to take. Whenever a major decision needs to be made, a vote is called and all members get one vote, typically. Other examples of some other types of co-ops include marketing co-ops, like you'd see with the milk board in which a bunch of milk producers got together and pooled their resources in order to represent a common cause, such as the you know, promotion of milk, and also credit unions, in which members enjoy many of the same services as banks, but often can get a more favorable interest rate because of their cooperative actions. There are many advantages to being in a co-op. Members usually have limited personal liability when it comes to the debts of the co-op, which means that essentially the members' personal assets cannot be seized in order to pay the co-op's debts. When a member leaves under any circumstance, it doesn't have a significant effect on the operation of the co-op, unlike a partnership where this can be devastating. Any profits made by the co-op are either reinvested or paid out to its members, and therefore the group always benefits. The co-op is managed by a group of volunteers from within the co-op, and since no one is paid, the membership fees can be kept very low. One of the major disadvantages to a co-op is that the larger the co-op is, the harder the decision-making process can be. Think about how hard it is for a large group of your friends to make a decision for what to do on Saturday night. In our co-op right now, there's a huge split between people who want a local fish farm to join and those who are opposed. Our group has, in our constitution, a complex majority or a two-thirds vote needed for anything to pass. This decision-making process has been dragging on for a long time right now and may end up costing us in the end in our business. Our board of directors are volunteers, which means that while we have an enthusiastic group of individuals working for us, sometimes we don't always get the best and the brightest in the business. Oftentimes, the lure of money is more important than a group or communal aspect. So that can sometimes be a bit of a drag. In the case of some co-ops, not so much ours, but other co-ops, it can be difficult in order to raise funds within the members. So if there's some capital that needs to be purchased, it's going to only come from the funds that the members have raised. This one's more of a limitation than a disadvantage, but co-ops are limited to doing business within its own membership. Uh, so therefore, uh, instead of maybe drawing upon a thousand members, you may only have 86, which at the end of the day means you can't get as low of prices uh, and you can't use that sort of buying power that you get in larger numbers. We're really proud of the work that 100 Mile Mark has done in the last few years. We've grown from just 12 members to now 172 members, uh, and we're, uh, we're really pleased with the cooperative model. We think you should try it.